Hello and welcome everybody to my channel Omni Bio Entrance and today we will be discussing DBT JRF Entrance Exam Question Paper Part 2 conducted in the year 2018. Part 1 I have already done. Then first question. An in vitro translation system containing microsomes was used to translate an mRNA encoding a secretory protein lacking the stop codon. Which one of the following outcomes can be expected? So stop codons, they signal the termination of protein synthesis by binding release factors which cause ribosomal subunits to dissociate releasing the amino acid chain. So the answer will be the protein will be synthesized and incorporated into the microsomes but will not be released from the ribosomes. Answer is option 4. Then next one. During subcellular fractionation, a protein is recovered in the membrane fraction. However, upon washing the membrane fraction with high salt, the protein is obtained in the soluble fraction. The mode of association of the protein with the membrane is via. So in the question it is given that the treatment for isolation of the protein is mild. It was obtained in the soluble fraction. It shows it is a peripheral membrane protein and the protein are attached to membrane by non-covalent interaction. Answer is option 3 non-covalent bond. Then next one. The result of an in vitro phosphorylation assay of a protein using gamma P32 ATP in the presence of various kinases is shown below. The bands represent phosphorylated proteins detected. Lane 1 no kinase, lane 2 kinase 2, lane 3 kinase 2 followed by inactivation of kinase and subsequent addition of kinase 3. Lane 4 kinase 3 followed by inactivation of kinase and subsequent addition of kinase 2. Based on the autoradiograph show, shown above, it can be concluded that. So, lane 2 represents only kinase 2. Lane 2 represents only kinase 2 band, but lane 3 shows a new band along with kinase 2 band. It must be the kinase 3 band. Lane 4 shows only kinase 2 band and no kinase 3 band even though kinase 3 was added. So lane 4 shows that kinase 3 is dependent on kinase 2. Lane 3, 4 shows that kinase 3 is dependent on kinase 2 for its action. That is why we got two bands in lane 3. There, uh, there first kinase 2 was added followed by addition of kinase 3. So kinase 3 dependent depended on kinase 2 for its action. Since kinase 2 was added only after addition of kinase 3, lane 4 did not show the kinase 3 activity band. Since kinase 2 band appeared both in lane 3 and lane 4, it shows that kinase 2 is independent of kinase 3. So the answer here is option 3 that is kinase 2 can phosphorylate the protein independent of kinase 3. Answer is Option 3. Then, effective oral rehydration therapy requires the presence of both Na plus and glucose because the intestinal epithelial cells expresses. So, sodium glucose importer is found on the apical membrane of the intestinal epithelial cell. The sodium and glucose bind to the symporter and are simultaneously cross-transported into the epithelial cells. So that is why for effective present, uh, for rehydration therapy you require both Na plus and glucose. Because the um, Na plus glucose symporter on their apical membrane, intestinal epithelial cells express Na plus glucose importer so for so along with Na plus glucose is also transported. Then next one. The Warburg effect in cancer refers to their ability to perform aerobic glycolysis. Answer is 1. Warburg effect can be defined as an increase in the rate of glucose uptake and preferential production of lactate 
even in the presence of oxygen. Then, in a migrating cell, the relative position of the dash and the dash determines the polarity of the cell. So, it is nucleus and Golgi. Answer is option 1. During apoptosis, lipid asymmetry is lost, permitting annexin 5 to bind to dash in the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane. So, the surface of healthy cells is composed of lipids that are asymmetrically distributed on the inner and outer leaflet of the plasma membrane. One of these lipids is phosphatidylserine is normally restricted to the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane and is exposed to cytoplasm. However, during apoptosis, lipid asymmetry is lost and phosphatidylserine become exposed on the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane. So, annexin 5 binds to this phosphatidyl serine. So, answer is option 2 that is, sorry, option 1, phosphatidyl serine. A cargo has to be delivered from the center of the cell to the cell periphery using microtubule network. To which protein does it need to be associated with? So, it is to be with kinesine. A kinesin is a protein belonging to a class of motor proteins found in eukaryotic cell and kinesin move along microtubule filament and are powered by ATP hydrolysis. Kinesin walk towards the end, plus end of the microtubule which in most cell entails transporting cargo such as protein and membrane components from the center of the cell towards the periphery. This form of transport is known as anteriograde transport. In contrast, dynins are membrane motor proteins that move towards the minus end of the microtubule in retrograde transport. So, the answer here is option 2 that is kinesine. Then next one. Deamination of which of the following bases will not be recognized by the DNA damage repair machinery. Spontaneous deamination of cytosine forms uracil which is recognized and removed by DNA repair enzyme. Deamination of 5-methylcytosine forms thymine, which is not recognized by DNA repair enzyme, consequently can result in C to T mutation. So, the answer is option 2, that is 5-methylcytosine. The graph below shows the excitation and emission spectra of 3 fluorophores. CFP, GFP, YFP. If you were to design an experiment to image two fluorescently labeled proteins inside the same cell, which is the best combination to use? So it will be CFP, YFP as they have maximally separate excitation and emission spectra. This is the excitation spectra of CFP and uh, this is that of yfp so they have maximally they have excitation spectra is maximally separate and similarly the emission spectra this one and this one they are also see here it is starting at 425 here it is 500 so emission spectra are also maximally separate so the answer here will be option 2 Then skinned mice lack T cells owing to the. So skid is severe combined immunodeficiency and uh, they defect in uh, recombinase enzyme, uh, recombinase genes. Answer is option 2. Then anti human mu chain antibody specific for epitopes present in the. So, the polypeptide or protein sequences responsible for the mu chain are found in the constant region of the IgG molecule. So, the answer is a constant region of the IgG molecule. Answer is option. Haptine carrier hypothesis was useful in designing the vaccine for Haemophilus influenza B. Answer is option 3. Tetanus toxoid is a protein that can be chemically that has been chemically treated to retain its. So, toxoid is bacterial poison or toxin that is no longer active but retains the immunogenicity property. So, the answer is immunogenicity but not its toxicity. 
Hemolytic uh, disease of newborn called erythroblastosis vitalis commonly develops in mothers which uh, re with repeated pregnancies owing to the activation of IgG secreting memory cells. Human olfactory receptors are G protein coupled receptors. Primary neurotransmitter that plays a role in the sleep, appetite, arousal and mood is it is serotonin. Answer is option 1. For some people, it is popular herb added in food for flavor, but for others, it tastes like soap due to mutation in OR6A2 receptor. The herb is cilantro. Answer is option 3. Chromosome complement of river versus swamp domestic water buffalo is 50 versus 48. Answer is option 1. Which one of the following animal diseases was officially declared eradicated by FAO in the year 2011? It is rinderpest. Answer is option 4. Pest de petits ruminants is also known as goat plague. A viral disease of goat and sheep is caused by morbili virus. Answer is option 1. Which of these is used as preferred inhalation anesthetic for laboratory animals? It is isoflurane. Answer is 1. Uh, A1 by A2 cow milk are genetic variants of the beta casein milk protein that differ by a single amino acid at position 67. The variants for A1 and A2 are so casein it is a major milk protein and most frequently observed variants of beta casein are A1 and A2. The difference between A2 and A1 is that beta casein variant is a single nucleotide which results in a single amino acid proline to histidine substitution at the 67th residue of the 209 amino acid chain. So A1 is histidine and A2 is proline. Answer is option 1. Dental formula of cattle older than 4 years is option 2. 0 by 4, 0, 0, 3, 3, 3, 3. In utero, microcephaly is caused by Zika virus. Answer is option 4. Labels on the tubes containing Fab and Fab A dash 2 fragments of Anti-SRBC were dislodged. Recommend one of the following techniques to identify correct fragments in the tube. So, FAB fra fragment antibodies are generated by papain digestion of the whole IgG antibodies to remove the entire FC fragment including the hinge region. These antibodies are monovalent containing only single antigen binding site. Because FAB fragment has only single antigen site, they are monovalent and they are non-precipitating. Now, FAB2 fragments. When whole IgG antibodies, sorry, FAB-2 FAB fragment antibodies are generated by pepsin digestion of the whole IgG antibodies to remove most of the FC region while leaving intact some of the hinge region. Now FAB2 uh, two fragments have two antigen binding portions linked together by disulfide bond. Therefore they are divalent. And FAB2 fragments can both bind and precipitate antigen because they are divalent. So uh, now to identify the correct fragments in the tube. Fab is not is monovalent and it is not precipitating. It is not precipitating. Whereas Fab 2 has got two antigen binding sites and it can precipitate and it is divalent. So agglutination with SRBC would be the technique to identify the correct fragments in the tube. Two cell lines, Vero and SP2OAG14 were cross-contaminated. In order to confirm the homogeneity of the cell lines, which of the following approaches would be used? So SP2OAG14, the chromosome number varies from 58 to 65 and the model class being 61 to 62. 
we wrote the chromosome number varies between 52 and 62 and the model chromosome number appeared to be 59 chromosome so how will you um, distinguish between these two cell lines is comparative assessment of chromosome number of the cell lines answer is option 2 then next match the genus listed in a with features in b so clostridium is growth in thioglycolate broth streptococcus growth in blood agar shigella dysentery pseudomonas nosocomial infection so answer is 1 b 2 c 3 d 4 a answer is option 1 Vitamin D3 formed in the skin is converted to 125 dihydroxy called calciferol in the liver and kidney. Answer is option 2. Recently, US FDA approved CART treatment is A. So, CART T cell therapy or clinical antigen receptor cell therapy is a way to get immune cells called T cells to fight cancer by changing them in the lab so they can find and destroy cancer cell. CART cell therapy is also sometimes called as a type of cell based gene therapy because it involves altering the genes inside the T cell to help them attack the cancer. So CART treatment is a cell therapy. Answer is option 2. Beta glucans protect aquaculture organism from various pathogenic strains because they beta glucan is a potent, valuable, and consuming and promising immunostimulant for improving immune status and controlling diseases in fish culture. So it enhances immune response and promote growth of prebiotic gut bacteria in aquaculture organism. Answer is option two. Which of the following is used for culturing Perna viridis? Perna viridis is an edible mollusk and raft culture with hanging ropes can be used for culturing. Answer is option 1. From the table below match the pelagic zone with their respective depth and choose the correct option. Mesopelagic uh, is uh, greater than 200 to less than 1000. Bathypelagic is... Uh, greater than 1000 to less than 4000. Abyssopelagic is greater than 4000 to less than 6000. And Hadopelagic is <coughs> greater than 6000 meters. So the answer is option 4. 1Y, 2Z, 3W and 4X. Dead zones in the ocean refers to they are oceanic region that are extremely hypoxic due to substantial eutrophication. Answer is option 4. Gynogenesis in fish is, is achieved by Gynogenesis is development in which the embryo contains only maternal chromosome due to activation of an egg by a sperm that degenerates without fusing with the egg nucleus. So fertilization of egg with UV radiated sperm followed by heat shock treatment can be achieved by option 3. A microbial community has grown on starch anaerobically and it produced a mixture of metabolites with the following composition glucose, disaccharides, acetate, butyric acid, butanol and carbon dioxide. This microbial community is comprised of E. coli produces acetate, formate, ethanol etc. under anaerobic condition. Colostridium species produce butyric acid and methanosarcina ber uh, berkeri grew and convert acetate to carbon dioxide and methane. So it is the microbial community is E. coli, colostridium and methanosarcina. Answer is option. Then in an air sample 12 percent particulate matter is around 25 nanometer size, 35 percent around 10 nanometer, 30 percent around 5 nanometer and remaining are 2.5 nanometer or smaller. The respiratory particulate matter in this sample is. So let the total particulate matter in the air be 100 percent. 
given a uh, give give given air sample has 12 percent plus 30 percent plus 35 percent that is 77 percent particulate matter remaining respiratory particulate matter in the sample is 100 minus 77 that is 23 percent so the answer is option d that is 23 percent then a mixture of food waste on inorganic analysis was found to contain Cl minus SO4 minus NO3 minus NH4 plus ion. Successful anaerobic digestion by a mixed microbial community will result in biogas having the following gases. Methane, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfide and hydrogen. Answer is option 3. A bioremediation mesocom experiment has been carried out on a plot with 250 parts per million aromatic molecules as contaminants. After 15 days, the level of aromatic molecules came down to 100 parts per million at a temperature of 48 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. The electrical conductance of this site has increased over time because of the increase in organic acids. Answer is option 3. Internal coordinates for representation of three-dimensional structure of protein consist of bond length, bond angles and dihedral angles. Cis peptide unit corresponds to the OCNH dihedral angle degrees. So in proteins, the two torsion angle phi and psi called the Ramachandran angle describe the rotation around the NC alpha and C alpha C bonds respectively. The third possible torsion angle within the protein backbone is called omega and it describes the rotation at the peptide bond. Peptide bond can have two conformations that is cis and trans peptide bonds. In trans configuration, the two alpha carbon atom of, are, of the connected amino acid are on the opposite side of the peptide bond, whereas in cis configuration, they are on the same side of the peptide bond. The torsion angle can be around 0 degrees for the cis and or around 180 degrees for the trans. So they have asked for cis peptide unit correspond to the OCNH dihedral angle by degree of 0. Answer is option 1. Then which of the following corresponds to the amino acid pair having maximum and minimum number of allowed conformations in the Ramachandran plot? So, maximum is glycine and minimum is proline. Answer is option 1. If the energy of a protein structure is calculated using molecular mechanics force field, which of the following energy components cannot have negative uh, value? Bond energy, dihedral energy, van der Waal energy, Electrostatic energy. So out of these, bond energy cannot have negative value. Answer is option 1. Then X, Y and Z correspond to three different conformers of an 18 residue peptide where X is alpha helix, Y is beta strand and Z is 310 helix. Which of the following corresponds to the conformers in the decreasing order of end to end distance? Now rise of alpha helix, 1.5 Armstrong per residue. So 18 residue per peptide will have 27. Rise is distance between amino acids. Okay. So that is for alpha helix it will be 27. For beta sheets, axial distance between adjacent residues in the beta strand is 3.5 Armstrong. So for 18 residues it will be 18 into 3.5 that is 63. And the rise of uh, 310 helix is 1.922 Armstrong. So for 18 residues, it will be 36. So 27, 63 and 36. So which is greater Y? Y is beta strand. Then comes the 310 helix that is Z. And then comes the alpha helix that is X. So Y, Z, X. Answer is option 1. Then which of the following protein structure prediction method is based on the principle of locating lowest energy minimum in the conformation space of a protein? So that is ab initio structure prediction. Answer is option 1. 
Then, which of the following can be used to measure the extent of similarity between the predicted structure of a protein and its experimentally determined structure? So, it is the root mean square deviation between uh, corresponding atoms of two protein chains is a commonly used measure of similarity between two protein structures. The smaller the root mean square deviation in, is between two stru structures, the more similar are these two structures. So, answer is option 1, root mean square deviation. Then, pro site pattern representing the conserved sequence motif for a uh, new family of AMP binding protein is. They have given the pattern and you are given a sequence of 15 amino acid struts starting from the first residue of the motif. Which one of the following protein is likely to have AMP binding function? Now those in square bracket it means either one of the amino acid has to be present. Two represent uh, two different and X represent two different amino acid. So starting from the first uh, residue. So here LIV, MFY. So if you see option 2 it is M starting. Okay that's correct. Then comes two amino acids which are different. So a and G then come STG. So from that T has been taken. Then in the next column A has been taken. Then G and S. So option 2 is the answer. Whereas if you see one it is LIV. Only one amino LIV MFY. They have taken it as such. Only one of the amino acid has to be taken. Not the whole thing. Similarly, in case of 3 also and in 4, they have taken L, then they have given 2 amino acids, uh, SS, then they have taken T, then they have taken A, then they have written as YTT. Instead of G, they have written Y. So, that is also not correct. So, answer is option 2. Dot matrix analysis of the amino acid sequences of lambda fudge C. I horizontal sequence horizontal sequence and the FAJ P22 vertical sequence represses is shown below which of the following is correct so this is a dot matrix analysis and the two lines are parallel to each other and B is parallel to the main diagonal that is A so line A indicates similar sequences and line B indicate repeat sequences answer is option 1 then next one, an alignment of two protein sequences showing matches, mismatches and gaps is given below. Sequence A is this, sequence B is this. The similarity score of the above uh, alignment will be. Now how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So this is the sequence A and this is sequence B. 10 are there. So size of the alignment is 10. Number of identical bases is 7. 1, These are the identical bases 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So number of identical bases by size of alignment into 100 that is 70%. So the answer uh, to the question is 70%. Which, of, which one of the following is the depiction of GenBank sequence entry format? Option 4. Answer is option 4. This one. Then, two sequences of comparable length have several regions that align locally but are separated by other regions that align poorly. Which algorithm can be used to find the highest scoring alignment between the two sequences? So, it is a needleman Wunsch algorithm for uh, global alignment. Then, which one of the following tools can be reliably can reliably establish an evolutionary link between two proteins and align them even if they share very low degree of sequence similarity? So that is Cyblast. Answer is option two. Then next one. 
A 30 KB candidate gene linked to prostate cancer from a patient was digested with XHO1. Following southern hybridization of the digested product with full length gene probe, three bands of 15, 10 and 5 KB sizes were obtained. However, an identical experiment in normal individuals gave 15 KB fragment. This could be due to so approximately 60% of heritability and more than 100 well recognized genetic single nucleotide polymorphism have been found to be associated with prostate cancer now as per the question southern hybridization of the gene from prostate cancer resulted in three bands 15 10 and 5 kb sizes whereas a gene from normal patient only a 15 kb fragment was obtained so as i said earlier prostate cancer is caused by snp so the extra two bands may be due to snps in the prostate cancer gene which caused prostate cancer so the answer is presence of snp in the candidate gene answer is option 1 then next one parents who appear normal have a child with sickle cell anemia which is autosomal recessive trait the woman becomes pregnant again and is told that she is carrying fraternal twins what is the probability that both the twins will develop sickle cell anemia so so the parents they appear normal but they are carriers of the disease so these are the gametes and these are the crosses so one fourth develop sickle cell anemia probability twins will develop sickle cell anemia is 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 that is 1 by 16 answer is option 1 the following pedigree shows the inheritance of a human disease what is the most likely mode of inheritance for this trait what is the probability that is an of 3 1 would be affected by the disease if 3 1 is known to be a carrier so they have given Uh, 3 1 as carrier this one as carrier so this 2 also is going to be a 1 2 is also going to be a carrier so the, so this is the male and this is the female and these are the offsprings and they have asked what is the probability that a son of 3 1 would be affected by the disease if 3 1 is known to be a carrier now if 3 1 is known to be a carrier and uh, the affected and uh, this is the affected male what is the probability that it would 3 uh, 1 would the son of 3 1 would be affected by the disease if 3 1 is known to be a carrier so these are the offsprings produced upon the cross and uh, the probability that uh, son will be affected is half or 0.5 and what is the type of inheritance it is the trait is more common in males than in females as you can see it is the males that are affected not the females females are only carriers there is no male to male transmission if a mother has a trait all her sons should also have it so if mother is either a carrier or heterozygous the sons are also going to have the disease so this is a case of sex linked recessive inheritance and the probability that the son of 3 1 would be affected by the disease if 1 3 is known to be a carrier is 0.5 so the answer here is option 4 sex linked recessive and 0.5 in a given population 1 out of 400 individuals have cancer caused by recessive allele p assuming the population is in hardy weinberg equilibrium what is the expected proportion of individuals who carry the p allele but not develop cancer so q square is 1 by 400 q is 1 by 400 or q is 1 by 20 p plus q is 1 p is 1 minus q 1 minus 0.05 that is 0.95 so they have asked for carriers so 2 pq 2 into 0.95 into 0.05 that is 38 by 400 answer is option 4 then color blindness in humans is an x linked trait a color blind man has a 45x daughter who is also color blind the non disjunction that lead to the 45x daughter occurred in which parent and in which meiotic division 
so x e from father because father will produce only one chromosome one x chromosome gamete so the daughter to be color blind x e has to come from the father and mother should have undergone non distinction in meiosis 1 uh, resulting in gametes carrying no x chromosomes so mother and first meiotic division answer is option 3 a marker present outside the targeted qtl used to check the crossing over is called it is called a recombinant uh, marker linkage disequilibrium decay is much rapid in outcrossing than in selfing species answer is option 1 then gene for gene hypothesis states that For each resistance gene in the host, there is a corresponding gene for a virulence in the pathogen, in conferring host resistance. Then, in an order tetrad analysis, if the two genes are not linked, the dash will be almost equal. So, if a crossover does not occur between the two loci, or if a two-strand double crossover occurs between them, the resulting meiotic products will be of two kinds. both resembling parental combinations and appear in equal frequency such a tetrad is called parental ditype and what is non parental ditype it is if a four strand double crossover occurs between the two genes two kinds of products are formed both having recombination such a tetrad is called non parental ditype so when genes are unlinked the parental ditype tetrads and the non parental ditype tetrads are expected in equal frequencies So the answer here is option one. Parental ditype and non-parental ditype will be almost equal. Maize transgenic for bacterial CSPA, a RNA chaperone, imparts tolerance to. It imparts tolerance to water stress. A multi-line variety is. So it is a. mixture of isogenic lines that usually confer resistance to a specific disease answer is option 1 uh, assume gene a is dominant over a and b1 is co dominant over b2 in petunia a cross is made between two individuals a a b1 b2 and small a small a b1 b2 assuming that there is no gene interaction the progeny will segregate in a phenotypic ratio so these are the gametes produced and upon crossing you will get red pink and white pink because they have told it is co dominant so the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 answer is option 3 then next one a variety x is a donor for resistance to blast but it has an undesirable gene for lodging susceptibility that is tightly linked to the blast resistant gene The best breeding method which has high probability of breaking this linkage is Any progeny carries a desirable character will always carry the linked undesirable G, desirable one uh, while any progeny does not carry desirable character neither will carry undesirable characters so breeders use back cross method scheme to remove linkage uh, drag So the answer here is option four, that is back cross method. Then next one, upon application of inhibitor dibromothymoquinone, which one of the following events in the chloroplast electron transport chain will not take place? That is reduction of cytochrome B six F. Answer is option three. Then. The reduction phase of Calvin Benson cycle in Arabidopsis is inhibited. This can be attributed to the inactivation of inactivation of three phosphoglycerate kinase. Answer is option four. Then next one, sucrose phosphate synthase. is inhibited by sps kinase and activated by sps phosphatase it is known that high ratio of glucose 6 phosphate to inorganic phosphate maintain sps in its active form which one of the following statements is true 
So sucrose phosphate synthase in, is the plant enzyme thought to play a major role in sucrose biosynthesis. Sucrose phosphate synthase is activated by glucose 6-phosphate and inhibited by orthophosphate. The enzyme is inactivated in the dark by phosphorylation of a specific serine residue via a protein kinase and activated in light by dephosphorylation via a protein phosphatase. Glucose 6-phosphate phosphate inhibits the kinase and PI inhibits the phosphatase. So answer here is option 3 that is glucose 6-phosphate inhibits SPS kinase. Answer is option 3. The bacterium flagellin activates a typical MAPK cascade consisting of MEKK1, MKK4, MPK6 leading to the activation of ACS6 enzyme involved in ethylene biosynthesis in plants. Which one of the following events will be true in transgenic Arabidopsis plant over expressing the constitutively active form of MKK4? Flagellin stimuli are not required for the activation of ACS6. Since Arabidopsis is overexpressing MKK4, which is constitutively active form of MKK4, flagellin stimuli will not be required. Answer is option 3. Next one. In Clavetta mutant of Arabidopsis, shoot apical meristem size and expression of visual. WUS is increased. SAM size is reduced in WUS mutant plants. Choose the correct statement regarding the function of these two genes. It is given in option 2. It is uh, CLV negatively regulates WUS expression and WUS positively regulates SAM size. So it is given in option 2, it is CLV. So it is not mutated CLV. It is in capital letters. So it is not mutated CLV. As per the question, CLV mutant plants have increased WUS expression, which means in CLV, that is wild type, WUS expression is less. This may be because CLV negatively regulates WUS expression. In CLV mutant, SAM size increases, so CLV wild type SAM size is less. But in mutant, there is increased expression of WUS which increases SAM expression. So the answer here is option 2. Then, which one of the following statement is correct during uh, gibberellic acid signal transduction in plants? So, Della protein stim, uh, is a key negative regulator of gibberellin signaling. That is shown here in the Della protein stimulate GA response. Della protein is key negative regulator of gibberellin signaling. Okay. Now, before coming to explanation, what is Della, what is G1, D1, etc., we will see. The D repression regulatory model for Della mediated GA signaling. This is the uh, diagram of that. The Della protein act as a key repressor of GA signaling. These are the GA responsive genes. This is the Della. This is the transcription factors. In the absence of GA, in the absence of GA, the Della protein restrain growth by sequestering transcription factors into inactive protein complexes. So Della forms complex with the TFS that is transcription factors and restrain growth. Then conversely GA promotes plant growth by 26x proteosome dependent degradation of Della proteins. Now if uh, gibberellic acid is present it will, it will result in 26S uh, proteosome dependent degradation of Della protein. See, pro Della protein is ubiquitinated. 26X proteosome uh, will cause degradation of this Della. The binding, how the binding of GA to GD, GID1 protein permits the interaction between G1D1 and Della. The formation of the GA, G1, D1, Della complex enhances the interaction between Della and the 
F box protein component of SCF SLY1 and G1D2 resulting in polyubiquitination of DELA and its targeting for uh, degradation via the 26S proteasome pathway. The degradation of DELA protein releases the transcription factors which in turn activate the expression of GA response genes. So first what happens? When uh, G, uh, GA is not present, DELA will bind to transcription factors and it will not cause uh, the transcription and translation of GA response gene. But in the presence of GA, it will bind to G1, D1 and it will bind to DELA. DELA will get ubiquinated and in turn it will bind to SCF, SLY1 and G, G1, D2 complex and this complex will be and will help in the degradation of DELA by 26X proteasome. Now what will happen? DELA will release the transcription factors which will bind to GA responsive genes. So DELA protein stimulate GA response? No. G1, D1 does not make complex with the DELA protein. G1, D1 makes complex with the DELA proteins. Degradation of DELA protein by 26X proteosomal pathway, that is correct. G1, D1 protein get degraded by 26, it is not G1, D1 protein, it is DELA that is getting degraded. So the answer here is option 3. Then, any DNA fragment can be used as an STS marker provided it fulfills one of the following conditions. A sequence packed site is a short region along the genome whose exact sequence is found nowhere else in the genome. So it should be in a single copy. So answer is option 2. Which one of the following condition eliminate the possibility of horizontal gene transfer from a transgenic plant? So it is plastic transformation events. Then which one of the following transposition events would increase the DNA content in a given cell? So LTR transposons move by first being transcribed into RNA followed by reverse transcription leading to DNA copy that transpose within the genomic DNA. This is copy paste mechanism of transposition. LTR retro transposons encode proteins necessary for uh, retro transposition because transposition is done by copy paste mechanism DNA content can increase in the genome. So which one of the following transposition event increase DNA content in a given cell is lines. Answer is option 4. Then flower development in plants is regulated by the ABC model of gene regulation. Members of this gene family are characterized by which of one of the following domains. It is the MADS box. Answer is option 2. Which one of the following PCR assays only one primer is used for amplification? So ISSR only one primer is used for amplification. Answer is option 3. Inter simple sequence repeats are regions in the genome flanked by microsatellite sequences. PCR amplification of these regions using a single primer yield multiple amplification products that can be used for the study of genetic variations in various organisms. Then next, gaps in certain regions of the genome have been observed upon sequencing of a zero halophyte. Which one of the following databases will not be of any use in filling up these gaps? It is the QTL database. Answer is option 4. One of the most popular genes used for developing rice tolerant to flooding stress is so SUB1 locus contain three genes that is SUB1A, SUB1B and SUB1C. SUB1 gene A gene encoding ERF transcription factor confers tolerance to flooding in rice. So answer is option 1 SUB1A. Then refugia is a practice commonly employed to control. This was asked for uh, refugia con uh, was asked for consecutively in two DBT exams. You can refer my previous papers. I have uploaded them. So develop I have explained also what is this refugia there. So development of resistance in insects. Answer is option 3. 
So coming to the next question, oat seeds will usually not germinate when exposed to red light and far red light in the following order. So red light convert phytochrome to its active form PFR. This then triggers the plant to grow. In turn, far red light, it will convert the phytochrome from PFR to PR and PR is the inactive form of the phytochrome and it will not allow the plant to grow. So first, if you treat with far red light, if you see in option two, first, if you treat with far red light, there will be no growth. But if you treat with red light, there will be growth. And again, you treat with far red light, then it will not germinate. So answer is option two. Which genes are necessary for the transfer of the tDNA into the host genome? The product of which of one of the following gene is tightly associated with the 5' prime end of the T strand and helps in nuclear targeting? So it is with D2. Answer is option 4. Then an enzyme follows Michaelis Menten kinetics with the following parameters. Vmax, Km uh, have been given. The reaction velocity would be at which particular substrate concentration. So from option 3, if you see it is 1.67 millimoles per second at substrate concentration of 1.25 millimolar. So you have got Vmax, Km and substrate concentration value substitute in the equation and you will get 1.67 millimoles per second. We wish to produce a metabolite X whose biosynthetic pathway is feedback inhibited in the wild type strain. A mutation which leads to overproduction of X is discovered in the gene coding for a homodimeric enzyme which catalyzes the first step in the biosynthetic pathway of X. This mutation is most likely occur at the regulatory site because feedback inhibition it is a type of allosteric inhibition. And allosteric regulation is the regulation of an enzyme by binding an effector molecule at a site other than the enzyme's active site and the site to which the effector bind is termed as allosteric site or the regulatory site. So as per the question, allosteric enzyme is involved and it is mutated and mutation has taken place uh, in its regulatory site. So answer is option 2. So that's it. Thank you for watching my channel. Please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.